Uh, welcome everybody to the Tuesday, January 12th workshop for the town council. I see nobody joining us at the moment. So uh, we don't have anybody to offer any public comment. So this is to continue our discussion from last month about uh, 2021 goals and just uh, making sure, did everybody receive what Matt sent around uh, yesterday that Nicole um, had worked on? Great. Um, before we jump into that, does anybody have any um, anything they want to start off with? Or if not, we'll uh, just turn it over to Nicole to maybe walk us through um, what she put together. So seeing, seeing nobody, oh, Penny, go ahead. Sorry, can you just uh, like outline what process we want to go through because I, um, so Nicole's gonna kind of run through the concept and then we'll go back through with uh, detailed comments or how do we want to do it? Yeah, I, th I think that makes sense since we're, you know, looking at a, a little bit of a different presentation and, and, and sort of architecture for how we structure the goals this year. I think what I'd like to do is to have Nicole just sort of walk us through our thinking first, and then we can circle back around for discussion on more of the content. Does that make sense? Yep. So sort of framework first and content second, I guess, is the best way to put it. Does that make sense to you, Nicole? Yep, I lost my unmute button somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Any other questions before as Nicole gets that pulled up? Okay. All right, I'm gonna try my best to make the Zoom as big as I can. Um, I don't know how to hide the side thing. Okay. I think if so, you do full screen, it'll it'll do it. Where you went in on okay. view there? Uh, go to uh, view and then full screen. Yep. Oh, perfect. Okay. Um, so I pulled out the vision statement, just looking for all of the words and stuff that are in there. And then what we talked about at the last meeting and try to figure out what buckets things kind of fit in. And so, you know, I put this in here because I referred to it quite a bit. Um, this page is really where basically taking everything that was in the goals last year and all of that that was already built out and just giving it some structure here. So the thought is that we have these kind of like five pillars of what we do here. And those are like the key objectives um, for the town providing services to our citizens. So um, looking at everything that we had and trying to figure out how things placed, um, these obviously can all change. So I want to preface like everything here is just draft filled in mostly just for um, for things that were already existing from the last year's goals, but also just to get you thinking about how this can look. So um, the infrastructure, education, economy, health and safety and preservation. And so it seemed like most of the goals that were talked about or the areas of service are in those five kind of buckets. If there are others that are kind of overlooked or not included, that's what I feel like we can discuss in like the second part of the meeting. And so what I'm really trying to get at here is like the high level, um, like what, what's the strategy? What are we working on right now in these areas? And so um, infrastructure, we, we had some notes about improving traffic safety and the seasonal, seasonal tourism needs were in the old goals, um, connect neighborhoods with bike paths and sidewalks, uh, expand cellular coverage, reduce the impact of power outages and I know that's like last year you guys got the generator and things like that. So um, this could definitely be broadened. Um, I kind of went in with the idea that this will probably expand up a little bit to incorporate more in there. Um, again, just for example purposes. Um, education, this is mostly from the vision statement that said the model and exemplify leadership in education and excellence in schools. The economy is the walkable and vibrant town center promoting transparent financial decisions. This can also be like um, supporting farmers and in, like finding ways to get more um, commercial activity happening. Um, health and safety is provide reliable emergency services, the diverse housing opportunities, the community services that was in the goals last year for the aging population. So 
um, there were a couple notes in there from everything from um, food security, transportation, community gardening, that type of thing. And then preservation being the last ones to support farming and locally grown food, value and protect open spaces, preserve and protect natural resources and expand waterfront access. So again, pulled up most of that stuff from what existed and kind of looked at like, here are our five pillars. And what I want to stress is that whatever gets put here doesn't mean it's there forever. So like next year, when you go through the same process, what's under each of those categories can change. So you normally keep those five categories the same until you know you go through an overhaul and need to change that but what's under them in the white area can change so maybe this year we're focusing on bike paths and sidewalks but next year infrastructures projects look different um, and then at the bottom here is like what resources do we need to provide for these objectives like how do we meet these and so this is the involved citizens the effective leadership the equipped workforce the regional collaboration and the fiscal management so a lot of those again were the goals that were in last year's so it's just supporting the framework so before i go on to like how we break that down into goals um I don't know it's better if we should discuss what these are. Um, I think I'll just give a brief overview of how this breaks down into goals. But again, these are examples where, you know, if the goal is to provide effective leadership, we can have some more information here, like equip the employees with the training and resources they need to deliver support to the town. And previously we had this um, continuously evaluate structure and succession planning and how staff is utilized and process improvements. And that's great, but what this is meant to do is that's always happening because it's one of our structures here. It's one of the resources is that um, equipped workforce. This goal setting area would be where we would get a little more specific. So like this is something that's already been done, but it shows that it can be more specific, like offer diversity, equity, inclusion training, you know, by March 2021. And that's where we can get to the what is the exact thing that's happening this year and what's the time bound on it. And so on these pages, I just kind of put in some of the things that were talked about at the last meetings or um, things that didn't fit from elsewhere from the goals. So I, it's probably best to start here with discussion and then talk more about like what the specific goals are later after we agree here, if that makes sense to you, Jamie. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Page I think one. it does, and I was just going to say, I, Penny, before you do, I was just going to say, everyone, I, I, I mean, just kind of, because it's, it's, I, I don't want to have to keep going back to see if people have hands raised or scroll through the bottom to see, like, because I'm, I'm only seeing a couple of you at a time. So just speak up, but, you know, we'll just all try and talk over each other all at once. But so anyway, go, go ahead, Penny. Can I, you didn't review page one. Oh yeah, this was from last meeting, the, the just overview I had shown you guys of what we were thinking about then of changing it. So there's nothing new here. I just didn't want to lose what we worked on last meeting. So this is almost like draft 0, 0.0 and this is draft 1.0, that's all. Okay. Okay, uh, that would have been nice to know. Um, so the town focus areas, where are they now down in the body? Where do they sit now? Uh, the, this, so that would be these five areas here. So you could call them focus areas or key objectives, yeah. Okay, okay. Now I have to reintegrate my scribbles. Okay. Essentially, when Nicole, I tried to start working with this picture here, there was just so much information that I felt like a lot of the depth that you guys have previously done was not going to be portrayed in this format while I was working with it. And so I didn't want to try and boil things down. Um, essentially, you can take this like priorities area as these and the goals would be the next pages that we would work on later. 
So this is totally clear to me. I, I like the I like the format. I like the presentation. Um, I agree that the pillars sort of evergreen. The things that you're focusing on within those areas will change either year to year or you know in you know, one to five year increments, depending on the nature of a project or something like that, or a, a nat the nature of something that's a, a key priority or key focus. The, I imagine that the resources to accomplish the key objectives probably stays pretty static too over time, um, unless there was something that was very, very specific, which might just get called out separately, you know, um, more of a one-time thing, but. For the most part, yeah, those like the yeah. the objectives would probably, like you said, I think five years might be the time frame. Like the next time you do a comprehensive plan, it might include mm -hmm. looking at these things. Um, but yeah, the resources involved. I mean, other than us brainstorming here, of like something that was missed. Um, and then it it makes what where you started to go into just the the straw man on on four and five there. Um, it I mean that makes sense that. Um, on the next slide, the slides four and five, that makes sense to me that that's where you get into more of the tasks, the to do's, the deliverables and things like that. Um, I agree with you. I think, you know, one of the things we've always tried to accomplish, but admittedly struggled with is how to create, you know, literal action items without just making an endless laundry list. I think we talked about that at our last meeting. And so I think this helps to organize those things similar to how the old, the, the, the previous word format did around the, you know, potential ways for um, accomplishing, or I forget what the language was, implement potential ways for implementation or something like that. So, um, so this makes sense to me that it's, it's more specifically project action item deliverable kind of oriented. So. So are the are the goals at the at the top of each of those boxes though? Um, they're just those um, don't necessarily tie into the pillars then. Yeah. No. Okay. No. Um, and it, it really what the pillars are for they're they're almost two different things. Like this is for yeah. us to refer back to when we make goals or think of goals. Like oh wait, does that fit into what we were talking about right. earlier? What the big picture view is. And what I have here as um, goals were really just some of the things that got um, talked about last time and trying to find a place. Okay, what yep. might, they, might they fit? But I fully expect those will will change or be reworded. Or um, I, I expect one of the goals would somehow be around um, you know continuing the fiscal responsibility with COVID and um, budget season and all of that. I have a quick question. Uh, Go ahead. I, I really like how you have the, the pillars. It seems to me though that something's missing because we have, and I, and I don't know how you, to articulate it, but we have um, education economy, we have fiscal responsibility, but what about like social responsibility? I know we have preservation, but it just seems that we're also doing things for our constituents, right? For the people in the town. Um, like we have our tax reduction program, we have our civil rights committee. And I don't even know if that would be a pillar or how to name it, but it just seems that that's an important aspect for us also is um, kind of our, our social responsibility. I agree with so, you. Um, one thing I'd encourage folks to think about the, the the actual words, uh, we can we can get into nuance and finessing and things like that. So just I'll use the one you just brought up as an example, Valerie, where you know maybe instead of health and safety, it's health and well-being, and it's a, a broader you know encompasses a broader um, array of of things. Um, I think we can get into the detail on that. What I what I want to make sure folks are all aligned around first is the overall sort of framework and structure. And then we, I think we can work on fine tuning the actual content. Cause I agree with you, you know, I'm already trying to restrain from not 
as, as Nicole said, you know, that box across the middle can easily, <laughs> you know, grow to the whole height of the slide if we're not careful. So I want to try and make sure we, we are concise and constrain, constrain ourselves that way. But um, how, yeah, how we, um, you know, how we define the pillars and, and some of the, the actual terminology and stuff, I think we can, we can fine tune a bit, so. What are other people's thoughts? Go ahead, Penny. Just um, chime in, folks. Don't, don't, I don't, like I said, I can't see everybody. I, I think that the framework it, it's, is fine. I mean, it's, uh, it's similar to many other frameworks I've worked with in my life. Uh, they work fine, pillars work fine. Um, you know, one of the things to achieve those and moving into, you know, your uh, goals and objectives. I like the fact that we get a little bit more granular um, under those uh, goals and objectives because we can uh, uh, state real uh, kind of projects with time frames. So uh, the this, this structure uh, is fine. I think that, um, um, that getting into the, uh, the pieces is uh, kind of where I got, I don't know how to say this. Um, I think people who know me know that I need to get inside something for uh, more than an hour in order to have a uh, intelligent conversation. I, I scribbled all over these pieces of paper. I have thoughts on uh, pieces, but I didn't have the time to process where might they fit. So my input might become a bit uh, disparate. Uh, and so I don't want to bog things down, but I do see gaps in, in the detail. And so when we get there, I can offer more input, but the structure, um, I mean, it works. As long as it works for our community and people will understand it, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, so two, two things on that, Penny. Um, the first is, and, and maybe it's worth me backing up for just a second, what, what I was kind of thinking of in, in terms of, you know, how do we do this work and then, you know, land the plane to wrap it up is that we've got this meeting tonight, go through the framework, get agreement on that, begin discussion um, and, and have some consensus and, and, and start to coalesce around um, some of the content. But then all of us probably take, you know, that partially completed work away. And then we come back to our February one workshop, um, you know, with everybody providing their final input back ahead of that, uh, if possible. Uh, use that February one workshop to, you know, review everybody's inputs, you know, do our our editing down, all that kind of stuff, and then um, at our February eighth meeting, then vote to um, uh, approve the goals. Does that make sense to folks? I wasn't, in other words, I wasn't envisioning that we would spend all of tonight um, in an endless discussion <laughs> around finalizing it's everything. A, it's yeah. a frustrating process because this is a process that should be done in a room with yeah. uh, walls and stickies. Um, and I think that's what's frustrating about it because when you can do it with walls and stickies, then you can rationalize it at the end of all of the stuff being on the wall. So what right. we're going to try to do is rationalize um, uh, the thoughts of many people um, and in, in a way that is a bit more cumbersome than it, if you were in a room working it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree with you. I, I think we can get there. And I, I think the, the only the only difference is that it, it's going to require, you know, folks to just sort of go off on their own a little bit to do a little bit of individual homework to bring back to the group. That's all. Um, so I think I think we, you know, we we get everything kick started with the discussion here tonight, then then folks take away, um, you know, some of that and, and and are able to come back with more of their own individual input as well. So, um, the, so in order for 
in order for us to be able to take it away, we got to do some kind of uh, uh, test cases. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I figured we'd start to draw, right. you know, straw man out a couple of them, but not what, what, what I wanted people to be clear about was I wasn't figuring that tonight would be an exhaustive exercise in you know, getting word for word, everything finalized tonight. I just want to be clear on that. The other thing I wanted to ask, just I wanted to bring Matt in, um, because Matt, you're, you know, it's your responsibility to work with staff and everybody to take, you know, the goals that are laid out and basically turn those into work plans and things like that. So, um, you know, definitely want to make sure that this is something that you have clarity around, um, you know, the direction that this is going, and it's something that, you know, you think will be understood and workable for staff and all that good stuff, so. If, if I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, yeah, yeah. Th thank you for that. I know uh, when uh, Council Boucher and I uh, uh, met this morning via Zoom, uh, yeah, we did kind of look at it under or through that lens as well and try to plug in such uh, concepts as uh, you know, LED lighting and other uh, infrastructure, uh, for instance, on the energy efficiency side uh, that we yeah. can that we can look at, and then trying to tie those in. Uh, as, you, as you can see there under goal number two, uh, the Willowbrook culvert replacement uh, grant uh, that we're working on for this coming year, uh, the uh, the stormwater management that we're looking to do in Kettle Cove that was on uh, in the budget last year as well as other, you know, you got the different uh, social uh, social programs as well, you know, working with the Civil Rights Committee, implementing recommendations that they may have, uh, things along those lines. So I, th I think we can tie them in and uh, provide direction to uh, to the to staff as well as uh, tie that to the next, uh, to the upcoming budget as well. So we can uh, find the mechanisms and the funding to accomplish those goals as well, but trying to link them to it. I think it's. I, th I really like the structure. I think it'll. I think it'll work, and I think staff will find it um, very deployable as well. And uh, the other, okay. the other item I did have, I was just looking up here. L last year's goals were uh, were approved uh, in March as well, and the March meeting. So uh, I just don't. I just want the council to take that uh, take the weight off their shoulder, thinking that you need to 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 rush to approve it as well, because it, it is a it is a you know, it's a good lift and. Uh, just, just don't want you to feel that you need to to get it all done uh, within the, within a hurried time period. Yep. No, understood. And it, it's always a a tricky deliverable because it's not something that we start working on until after the new council is assembled. Then we have other couple other you know leading priorities ahead of that. So um, it's tough to get a jump on it, and it's it's not like it's something that we can have teed up and ready to go. You know, Jan one or anything like that. So. Um, What um, what are some other thoughts that folks have? Yeah, this is Gretchen. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Nicole, this looks great. I just wanted to thank you, first of all, for all your hard work on this. Um, one thing I think I'm getting hung up on is on slide three with the key pillars. Um, you had mentioned the key objectives and that we don't need to necessarily call them that. I think I'm getting hung up on that because to me, objectives sit usually under a bigger goal. So I don't know if we just want to label those like the pillars. It's kind of self-explanatory. I think that the items underneath are sort of examples of what falls under that pillar. So I don't know how others feel. Um, the other thing is, and I don't know, we can get into this and I don't know if it's necessary, but it would be really neat if we could find a way to show what we did accomplish as we go through this. Because I'm sure as we go from year to year, there are things that get taken off the list because they were accomplished. There's things that get taken off because they just aren't priorities anymore. There are things that get carried over that didn't get finished. So I don't know if there's some way that we can kind of show so that we can track year to year what's being achieved versus moved off the list versus, you know, being a long-term project. So I don't know if that complicates um, things, but it'd be kind of neat if we could do that. I'll, I'll speak to what you're talking about um, less around the, the format and how we indicate on here whether or not something has been accomplished, but um, for you and Nicole, for your benefit. So usually some at some point, roughly midway through the year, um, Matt will usually, you know, sort of report to us on sort of, you know, we'll, we'll pull up the goals and he'll say, you know, hey, you know, just want to let you know how we're tracking against these things. I mean, most of it's stuff that 
we're aware of because we're involved in approving things, but some of the things fall a little bit more below the line and, you know, might not be things that, you know, necessarily come to us as agenda, an agenda item or something like that. And then the other thing is we do, um, and it's remind, it's my reminder, Matt, that, that, that I've got to get organized on it, but we do do an annual uh, performance evaluation for Matt. And so we also use, you know, basically use the goals as, as um, part of the framework for, you know, looking back on his, his performance for the year. So it's not something that we just, you know, agree on it at our February or March meeting and then don't look at it again throughout the course of the year. Um, as Matt said, we've, I think we've done a good job in the last few years of also when we're going through the budget cycle, you know, using this and also, you know, the comprehensive plan for that matter, um, you know, informing rationales for budget decisions and stuff like that. So, um, so that, that doesn't necessarily speak to the point directly that you're making about how do we have some kind of dashboard or scorecard that shows like, you know, yes, these seven things are green, these things are yellow or whatever, you know, I, I don't know what we necessarily want to envision for that, but, um, I just wanted to make clear that it's it's not something that we do this exercise, put it on a shelf and don't look at it again for the rest of the year, so. Thanks, Jamie. Mm -hmm. um, other thoughts from folks? I guess I'll go ahead. This is Valerie. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Nicole. This I think it's fabulous. It's nice to be able to um, to see it, to visualize it like this. Um, helps put it, putting it into categories and to to see it really helps. Uh, I like it. I I think it's um, really well done. It's laid out really nicely, and um, I'm excited for us to to work on it. So I think it looks great. Thank you. I did use sticky notes, Penny. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do know of a virtual sticky note program. Obviously, they have different free and paid levels, but I can send that to Matt. It, it, it does help people. Um, I have used it with work. Again, I, I do agree being in a room with sticky notes is a much different experience. Um, but it does have the ability to like rapidly make sticky notes. So while people are generating ideas, you can kind of make them and drag them on the screen. So that could be an exercise we can try doing um, as we're trying to navigate a difficult thing over um, video. Does it does it make sense as sort of a, a next step here for, for this meeting tonight to maybe sort of blow out one of one of the next um, uh, the the sort of columns on one of the next slides to sort of fully form out one of those. Um, I'm almost Is that wondering what you were talking about, Penny, or I'm almost um, wondering on this part because the goals need to relate under this. Okay. I think we need the pillars. Yeah. Okay. So let's focus on that. What do you so um, or at least start um, uh, refining the pillars. To, and I think the more um, elements we put underneath those uh, titles, infrastructure, education, yada, yada, um, the more we'll have a, a feel for what those pillars are. And, and by putting things under them, it may, in essence, change that title a bit. Then, um, then we can test the, um, the, what are the resources we need to do it, and then we can drive into the um, uh, the goals and uh, objectives on the uh, subsequent pages. Okay, so that, that's how my brain works. So um, let's start at the, at the sort of top of the pyramid, and as far as the definition of the the five pillars as they are here. Um, what are what are folks' thoughts and reactions to the the sort of categories that we have? Um, you know, I think 
Nicole appropriately pointed out that most most of these are sort of the highest level things that are pulled out from our vision statement. So I think it's well rooted in that. Um, but what are I know Valerie, you were just talking about, and, and we had the conversation around maybe instead of health and safety, it's health and well-being or something like that, because that might have a broader, um, you know, broader uh, uh, encompass a broader, um, you know, sort of subset there. But go ahead, Penny. I'm sorry. Um, this is this is what I I was trying to uh, test, and it's like um, uh, where would um, the uh, valuing employees fit? Because that's a key part of I think what we should do as a town is value our employees. Also, economic uh, viability or vi vitality for town and its citizens. Where do you think, because that's another thing that we do. Uh, and, and that helps us when we think about the economic um, viability of our town and citizens, I can go under economy. And so decisions we make are going to be linked back to that piece, which says we strive to have economic, uh, um, I'm gonna say vitality for our town and citizens. I'm not saying the words are perfect. Um, the other piece is where does um, maintaining infrastructure fit? Because, and I would say it's, it, it fits under infrastructure because what I think about is we need to maintain what we have while building toward the future. Um, and so that is something that I, I think needs to come across because we aren't, we can't expend all our dollars on future things without maintaining what we currently have. So it's that balance, that constant balance of how do we move forward at the same time uh, we're not uh, digging ourselves into a hole and having a leaky roof. Um, the other piece that I'm wondering where we fit is that balance of tourism with the, um, the what we want the essence of our town to be. I think it's a big challenge that we keep bumping up against and eventually got to solve that, that are we a tourist town or we are a town for our citizens? And if we're a town for our citizens first, then tourism and those decisions we make around that need to kind of take a um, less of a priority. So those are the types of things as I was looking through this that came into my head that said, where do we park these things? That's why I need sticky notes. Yep. Um, so I, I think a couple of things that you referenced have natural homes here, or maybe a couple others are a little bit more um, outliers and orphans, but um, uh, I understand where you're coming from, though, and um, I think I think we want we we do want to make sure that those things don't get lost, even though they don't necessarily have a a, a natural fit or a natural home. Um, That's the piece that I think that um, that this framework allows us to do is really think about um, the those pillars. Yes, they can change but there's uh there could be a pillar that's a constant there could be one that's a constant if that's what we want it to be um and uh, i don't know what that looks like um, well i would think that that and, and i mean there's no reason there can't be six or you know there's another one to add obviously um i know we certainly added to you know, when, when we had the previous format that we've worked with the last few years, I think we started out with five things and wound up over yeah. time with like six or seven. So, I mean, the, while it makes sense that I think have it be manageable and reasonable, there's no magic number of five versus anything else here. Um, I, I think that the, the, the headings of each of these are pretty fixed and, and evergreen. 
year over year. I think it's it's the things that fall under them that are the things that change. Well, but I, 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 I wouldn't I wouldn't envision um, the actual the actual pillars changing necessarily year to year. Just just the the items within them. Okay. Right? So we're always going to have infrastructure. We're always going to have economy. We're all, you know, whatever we call these things, health and well-being, whatever. I mean, I don't think there's any one of these things that next year drops off. It's just the and things I, that within those white boxes that change. Then I would ask a question of uh, education as a pillar. Um, maybe I'm a little they, stuck on that one too. Maybe the title of that is more of um, it's, it, it really gets into that creating the um, uh, valued, um, I'm just saying the value propositions of the town. Education is one of those value propositions. Um, there's a better title, but that's the, the concept. And another value proposition of our town is um, our, our open space, our um, uh, services that are provided. Uh, the um, things like that. And so education is actually a, a, a line item versus a title. Well, the other thing that that hung me up just a little bit is, is you know, our role in that too, right? So, um, and I, I actually was thinking of it more broadly than just um, excellence in the schools. I, I, I was starting to bucket some things like, you know, some of the things that are provided through community services for, you know, all different types of age groups in yeah. town for, yeah. you know, for lifelong yeah. learning, um, yeah. the library, yeah. you know, stuff like that. So education doesn't have to just be, you know, K-12. Um, but um, yeah, so I, you know, any of these pillars should be things that we have you know, sort of agency and impact over too, though, versus just something that is why people like CAPE, right? So then that that title is is really broader, such as, um, you know, um, it gets into that concept of um, continuous learning. Um, I, I can go search for better words than that, but it's really what it gets into. I'm trying to make some sticky notes for you. <laughs> Penny? What do you? Go ahead, uh, I, I completely agree with your saying. What um, I've seen of another town, what they did is they used um, the words um, fulfilled and empowered Portlanders, you know, Cape Elizabeth, capers, fulfilled and empowered, or, or a way to make it a broader category that way, so that way. I think throw those words down there, we can always play with them. Yeah, I was just gonna suggest something like educated and empowered community yeah. or something like that. I like Cause that. Then, yeah, because then Penny, some of what you were just talking about too, in terms of promoting community over tourism, some of that might be able to fit in there with a broader, that that might land in different places. Some of it might go there, some of it might go under economy, but it's, I like that it's a little broader. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I was thinking tourism could go, you know, with economy, we could call it something to that effect, even. Um, I, I think the whole tourism and town thing, if we, this is a far reach, just go with me, um, is um, we remove preservation and it's really um, con conserving the elements of our, of our town or, or something along those lines, because that's what, that's what we're doing in that category is we are really maintaining the essence of our, of our town um, and and part of that is um, valuing that uh, sense of community that we create. So again, we can play with the nuance, the words, but conceptually, that's kind of what I think about. And we could even call it something like that, valuing community. Um, mm -hmm. 
I really, I really like um, those words that you used. And in that is preservation, um, mm -hmm. preservation, support um, of farming. Mm -hmm. I just think preservation is such an overused word. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it, it's, it's more than, more than that. It's a, it's a feeling. And I like that, Penny, it would also include the cultural um, preservation, yes. historic preservation pieces too that are kind of missing a home right now. Oh, that's excellent, excellent, excellent. Under health and well-being, um, what can I, I look Can at I just jump in for two seconds? Just a, a point I want to make and not forget about Penny. And I know that- What if I, I said know that this no? Is a... What if I said no? <laughs> um, no, because it, it, it's not about goals and framework and stuff like that, but it just because you're using it as an example, and I just don't want the thought to get lost or me forget about it. But um, I understand exactly what you're talking about on the whole tourism community thing. Um, I, I take a, a slightly different view in that I don't think that that's an entirely binary choice. I and yes. Okay, I just want to, because I, I, I hear other people talking about that. And, and for me, it's more of a, you know, how do you this blend is it? the reality. So how do you appropriately balance those two things? It's not a matter of choosing one or the other. It's just how do you strike a balance with those? And so. each of your decisions as right. you move down the road is balancing those two things. Exactly. Okay. But when you were sort of teeing it up, I, I thought I heard you more say, and maybe I just misunderstood that, you know, we have to decide, are we going to be this? Or are we going to be that? And I, I think the decision's already been made for us in terms of the fact that we're, we're both. And it's sort of, how, how can you, how can you make that reality effective for everybody? So. Yeah. I agree. <clears throat> anyway, sorry. That's okay. Sometimes I speak in black and white. I was a <laughs> systems person. Um, the health Keep and going. well-being, I had, I thought about, um, it's, I thought about public services and um, versus just emergency services. And I don't know, maybe I'm trying to meld too many things together, but um, I think there's something that we're, don't take this wrong, Deb, I think there's something that we're missing in our town, which is more around the uh, social and emotional well-being of our citizens. And so we need to not only provide um, public safety um, from a, uh, a fire and police perspective, but from an emotional perspective. So where's that safe haven? Who can I go talk to? Those kind of things. And uh, that is something I think we need to um, include more and more in uh, the work that we do. Yeah, I think we've talked a lot in the last year or so about the de definition of sort of public welfare and social service, not not yep. welfare in the what folks might immediately think of as far as that definition go. But pe like I said, I keep using the term well-being. You know that you know. Mm -hmm. So, because that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And then under economy, it's um, uh, promoting a fiscally responsible, um, I would say budget or budget decisions or. Um, budgeting. And I want to add that that is kind of what the fiscal management down here gets to, that every decision made up here involves engaging these things down here. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so one piece that I had trouble fitting in by nature of not having the brainstorming process we have going now, um, the effective boards and committees, but I like that whole section from the old goals, but I think with what was suggested with this category here, moving toward educated and empowered community, I think that's where that effective boards and committees piece of things can, can go. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to that because um, I think maybe it's helpful context that um, not everyone not, not every one of our previous goals necessarily needs to find a home here. Um, and that is my recollection of when we first introduced that whole um, effective board and committees goal. It was at a time when some of the committees either weren't being as effective because they weren't being given good direction from the council or in, in some people's view were overreaching their um, charge and, and purpose and trying to um, do more in the way of policy making than um, advising the council and things like that. So there was some very specific things that prompted including that goal okay. that I, I'm not sure whether or not those same conditions you know, necessarily continue today. I don't think they do. Um, so I think while it's important, I, I would have, to me, having effective boards and commissions really falls, uh, and committees really falls more under the resources, right? So in order to get these things done, we need to have effective, you know, boards yeah, and committees, leadership. and, and that, that falls under leadership, but, it, you know, um, so, and involves uh, citizens, and yeah. involve citizens, both, yeah. So um, I, I don't know that it needs to be replicated or specifically called out on its own anymore. And Penny and Caitlin, you're, you, I think you're the only two that were probably around when we threw that in there and, and have recollection of what I'm talking about and mm -hmm. interested in your thoughts as to whether or not that has swung positively to the point where it doesn't need to be as much of a point of emphasis anymore. I would agree, yeah. Uh, I don't think it needs to be its own block at this point. I mean, we've kind of worked out all the kinks, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where does one town concept fit? Is that a resource? Everyone's favorite three words. <laughs> Perhaps infrastructure. Overarching. <laughs> I, I, I was actually I, not to cop out, but I almost feel like it's a it's. A, Band across the top outside of the pillars, and and because I mean, in theory, everything is supposed to fall within that, right? Or be viewed mm -hmm. through that lens. It's, I it's think there's like... potential to maybe add a slide between the vision statement yeah. and, and this page that maybe speaks to that, and also like some of the definitions that are in the old goals, like uh, I, I we'll think continue you're really... to improve and enhance and. I think you're hitting the nail on the head with that, Nicole, and, and probably uh, with a good point of view with a newcomer's eye, because it, it's one of those things you hear talked about quite a bit, and nobody really knows what the definition is. Um, so I think it, I think putting in a slide here that says, you know, here's our vision, and you know, all of all of what follows is to be you know, executed within this one town concept and here's what that is and what it's supposed to represent and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think that that would be hugely valuable um, for a number of different audiences um, to define that and have that be more of an introductory statement that applies to the whole, the whole thing, so. Now we just need somebody to define what it is. <laughs> So where do, and this may start getting into the next level, um, but you know, just bear with me. Um, where does um, debt 
service and capital needs. Those are things we always need to be aware of. And I know it's under, I mean, fiscal management, but does it fit under a pillar in the economy or is it starting to get down into um, a goal that is really about fiscal leadership and decision-making? So it's a good way to think about the framework itself is that um, the stuff in the pillars are like projects almost, maybe even the highest level of a project. And the things in the blue at the bottom are all of the things that you need to accomplish those um, projects. The goals that are on the next or the last pages, you can have goals in any of these things. So you could have goals just to like get citizen surveys. And so that wouldn't necessarily fit under the pillar projects, but it's improving the resources that implement the projects. And so um, also, it's also just a way to help framework. Like there is no right answer. Um, it's like fuzzy science, right? So this helps plan, but it, it doesn't mean everything's going to fit everywhere, but you can have goals that don't necessarily touch uh, a pillar or a theme or a project, but they're more aimed at the, um, improving the resources or the effectiveness of the resources or whatever that okay. may be. So, so then under these pillars, if we look at infrastructure, then that's where we would put um, um, something around uh, uh, effective and ongoing maintenance of existing structures, yeah. buildings. Because that's important. I've paid for enough leaky roofs in my taxpayer years. Um, and I really think there's something about, um, and it's going to become more and more important as we start um, uh, uh, kind of coming up to the point where we need to do major investments in uh, uh, town assets. And so our, our debt and our debt service and our capital needs need to be in the forefront over the next several years. I had wondered as a pillar whether or not economy, which feels like something that we don't have as much sort of direct control over if, if, if something more related to finance was, was the better pillar there. Um, it, it then doesn't necessarily include tourism, um, but um, so that's just a, an afterthought. But um, I think that's a I think that's a good concept, and and then um, and then if we look at you know the whole walkability of our, our town and our town center, um, isn't that an infrastructure thing? It could also yeah be, I think there's I think there's two different concepts be, there well in you can also yeah develop. one one is viable town center and, and and walkable town the other is uh or I'm sorry one one is walkable town yeah um and, and all that and then vibrant town center I, again I always question how much how much role we really have to play in that yeah it's all but but I think the walkability- Other than the zoning decisions we make, but- the Walkability under health and well-being, um, And the town center is something that we always- The thing I wanna make, yeah. The, the, the thing I just, I always come back to whether it was, whether it was the one with education or, or things like that is making sure that there are things that we actually have influence over and, and can direct outcomes on. Well, that's versus, where we, yeah, we versus, so, right. Right. We create that affordable housing 
um, we create the, the walkability, we create the attractiveness and then the town center uh, evolves into something vibrant. So are we starting to hone in on these titles being like infrastructure, educated and empowered community, finance, um, health and well-being or public welfare? And the last one, whatever essence of Cape Elizabeth is in a different phrasing. <laughs> Right, exactly. Okay. Secret sauce. <laughs> community? Is it community? Yeah, community, yeah. Well, I, I guess, and this comes back to my question around, you know, is there a six pillar? I mean, the, the thing about preservation here is very focused on, on natural resources versus aspects of community. So I, I, I do wonder if those are two discrete and separate things. I, I, I kind of think they are. Well, yeah, no, I don't disagree with that. I just get so tired of preservation. I want to say conservation then. Um, or you could say something like community character or um, uh, I think that um, what, what about resource protection or something? If you don't want it, all of these things speak to to meet a bit very much more specific things around natural resources, I guess is what I'm stuck on. So I and, would then and they're very they're very relevant to the things that we make regular decisions on all the time. So so then I would move support farming and locally grown food to uh, health and well-being. You could just call it natural resources instead of preservation and preservation is one of the aspects of natural resources. I like that idea. Because That's we want to find other things um, that we consider our natural resources. Not to make it too long, but would natural and cultural resources be more? Right. That's kind of what I was Just thinking. Natural yeah. cult and cultural. I think something that we need to um, fit in up in a um, more, because if these are projects, but I don't see it up here. Because um, I know when we get down into the, uh, the goals, we talk a bit about um, uh, climate uh, change goals. Uh, climate change goals are not just associated with uh, fuel. Um, climate change goals um, are also associated with uh, natural resources. Um, and, um, and so I think that somehow when we get down into that world building toward the future, I think we need to understand the uh, decisions we make around natural resources. Um, and of course the decisions we make around um, our energy consumption uh, those are the things that are going to feed into our uh, climate change because we should all be planting trees. You know, I, I agree. I think it's also part of our health and well-being 
and we're going to find later on it's going to be part of our infrastructure so um mm -hmm. because we're going to have infrastructure maintenance and things that are tied to um climate change so i mm -hmm. think that um it's probably going to touch on on every single pillar Another Sorry, I've been I've been holding back a little because my internet connection's off tonight. But um, I, I I agree, and I I, I almost wonder if um, it's not a project. I I, I mean I so I, I was having this conversation with somebody at work uh, the other day. Climate change is just a it's a strategic reality that we're operating in. We're not looking to create it or do. Frankly, I mean. Ideally, we'd like to take some actions to slow it, but we're responding to the reality that it presents to us, and it's going to inform decisions we make in all of these categories. I don't think it's necessarily a, a project, if you will. Kind of like tourism that's here. It's part of the scope. But is it, is it an, uh, Jeremy, is it an overarching thing, such as one town concept that decisions we make as we uh, uh, move through the years need to consider climate implications? Because you have to create a mindset in order to create change. And yeah, yeah, I know. I think to some extent that's right, yeah. that it permeates everything that we consider. Okay, cool. Yeah, it, it definitely impacts the infrastructure decisions that will be made in the future as well. I mean, there's, uh, there's yeah, they're just, uh, I mean, Sea level rise is an item that we will have to discuss and plan for, as well as multiple other different avenues. So I think it does. I think it does cross uh, multiple multiple pillars as well. Well, I think we're yes. already yeah. dealing with it with our culverts and things. So it, it's something we're already um, discussing and looking at. I'm down under goals and objectives now. So here's, here's my thought. Um, and, and I like the fact we went through that previous exercise because now it helps me kind of process these four uh, goal areas. And I, I think about um, if there's one missing, because I, I think most everything that we have in our, our previous goals can, can park in here. Um, but the thing that I, I'm gonna harp on is that I, I love building toward the future, but I've got to balance that with maintaining uh, the here and now. So I'm trying to figure out what that goal would be. Um, and it's, it's about, um, uh, it's about, it's really having um, the maintaining, maintaining our existing infrastructure um, in order to position ourselves for the future. I think there's a goal in here about existing infrastructure. Yeah, and Penny, I just wanted to point, I, I think Nicole had said that at the top that uh, I don't think that she viewed these four as just the finite four goals that no, these are just I, examples. No, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just, we, just also, so we also don't want 3,000 of them. No, and I know that, but I, so, so if we're, that's, I just want to make, excuse me, make yeah. sure everybody's clear. No, I understand that. Go ahead, Valerie. Well, I was just going to say on number three, then 
it could be build and maintain for the future because, because the future is going to happen whether we're creating something new or we're maintaining what we have. Um, we'd, we'd be building and maintaining, right? Hmm. Penny, I think that there is an opportunity to put some something here to what you're talking about, like uh, earlier with the making those fiscally responsible budget decisions so that way our balance sheets and our borrowing capacity look good for if we need that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I could see that being a goal here. And um, again, like this wording is, it, it could say build for the future. It, this is really getting at a lot of goals that we're talking about, like the LEDs and the um, all of that. Hey, Matt, do you have anything, um, whether it be from the capital improvement plan or I, I, it sounded like you and Nicole had a little bit of conversation and, and some of that stuff is reflected here, but either from the capital improvement plan or early discussions you're having around budget of things that, not to have the tail wag the dog at all, but you know what, what's the stuff that's basically already on the, on the radar? Yeah, we, we do have, I mean, there are, uh, you know, there's always reserves, re, sorry, reserves for replacement that we do need to always be prepared for, such as replacement for boilers, uh, roofs, things along those lines. Oh, yeah, sorry, I, I didn't mean just on this specific, I meant, I meant oh. more generally, like, uh, you know, things that are basically already in the plan, effectively, oh. that we need to make sure we kind of capture in the goals here. Yeah, I, not, I, I not just you. specifically on this one individually. Yep, sure. Uh, such as uh, yeah. the planning and engineering for the uh, the reconstruction and uh, 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 and uh, and work on shore road. Right, uh, that kind with of pedestrian stuff. improvements. Yeah, that's that. Uh, we will have those elements as well and uh, identified uh, that that we should have in there. But shore roads is the next big big path uh, or big project that we will have. Uh, and then, you know, future uh, future need would also be potential expansion of the sewer service sewer service area uh, within the community. Uh, things along those lines, we do have those identified at, with the, within the out years, so uh, we could tie that into this uh, into this fairly, fairly readily. I think. Yeah, if it's a 2021 thing, I mean, the sewer thing yep. probably isn't going to be a 2021 thing. So. Yep, we can we can know, definitely do that. Like, uh, we, I have all, or I'm in the process of assembling what we have for this year's uh, yeah. requests as well from all the departments, and then we yeah. have what we get, what we uh, did leave from behind from last year's uh, budget as well that uh, yeah. that we're, we're reviewing to think about bringing forward again for this Do year. Do we have any major equipment here? Oh, <laughs> that you're aware? Yes, one engine. Uh, Peter has put in for request for I think it's I want to say it's engine six, but it's uh, but it's one of our engines that's 19 years old. Yeah. Don't they have one in South Portland? <laughs> Sarcasm <laughs> duly noted, Councillor Jordan. <laughs> no, that, that's the that's our oldest unit. That's a, that's roughly about a six hundred thousand uh, dollar uh, piece that uh, that is that Peter has put forward for this year. So that's an active line of discussion. Cheaper than the last one we bought. Oh, I know. Thankfully, but this one doesn't have a ladder. <laughs> 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 but we are looking at uh, that's 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 probably our largest, you know, uh, our largest ticket item when it comes to, uh, you know, to hard to you know, hard assets. Uh, but the mm -hmm. other ones are are, are are planning and engineering. Shore Road's going to be the next one that we're really uh, lining up for because that's that's a generational project and uh, and much needed. Matt, um, 
Wasn't there also something in public works? I, I seem to remember Bob Malley said that every year there was something coming on the table and do you know? We lost a lot in the last budget. Yeah, yeah th those were, uh, yeah, we had the infrastructure uh, projects that were there, like Kettle Cove, for instance, the drainage project that we that we did the planning and engineering for this year. And uh, not, nothing, uh, well, nothing in, in comparison to the uh, to the fire truck, quite frankly. Uh, but but infrastructure projects are always costly. And then in the in the long term future, there's uh, uh, there's Outer Sawyer Road uh, where there's a culvert replacement or a discussion that the council will need to have. But that will include. Uh, we did a study on that two years ago, and we're, we're looking to work with Scarborough on that because uh, we have to make it. You know, there will be a discussion that will have to be had as to what should be done with that. And, and that's directly in relationship to, to climate change and, uh, and impacts. And I know, uh, but that would be a joint uh, operation between the two towns there. Uh, they currently don't have much of an appetite for it because of last year's budget and this year's budget. Uh, but it is something that uh, we will have to address within, I would say, wisely within the next two to three years uh, would be, would be uh, the best thing we could do. But that's an out, out year project. But that's that's one that overtops, you know, during flood tides and. But that that's a, that's an out year project. Under the um, provide effective leadership, um, I don't, one item that under collaborate with regional partners. I wondered about uh, putting something about uh, uh, participate in solving social and economic issues regionally. I think Jeremy's part of the GP Cog group that uh, works on this. Um, but I think that's something that more and more we um, need to uh, highlight in our town. And the uh, identify opportunities to share services. It's a, a, a continual thing. So you do that year after year. And then I, I wondered if paper streets fit under preserving natural resources, which then does preserving natural resources say, really expand to uh, access and things like that or I think it fits right under the, the subheading that's there now about protecting open access to town resources that is yep. a town resource. So. Yeah, and so does, is it preserving natural resources or something? I'll play with the words. Yeah. Um, and then my next question is, where does um, a strategy for uh, uh, fire and rescue services fit? Is it in preparing for the future? It could be, but again, these goals are, um, does anyone want to propose things outside of the, the four I kind of put in here based on conversation? Because I don't want you to feel like you're forced to have to fit things under these headings. Because... I'm, not, I'm not feeling, I, I, I couldn't think of a better title. So it's like I go, oh, okay, that can fit there. And, and even if you, we park it there, it, it may then pop out into something else. But I think if we get them down, then, like I say, you can then um, rationalize every day or we can. Yeah, and, and I guess to build on that, I would say there's sort of two relative large items that are on our horizon and have been for a couple of years that um, they're expensive and they're long-term changes that are going to change sort of a significant chunk of finances over time. One of them is, and they involve policy decisions, and one of them is the, the issue that Penny just highlighted around fire and rescue services and how we are going to manage and maintain that over time. And the other one is the the school investments, and, you know, and both of those are not things that we're going to do next year and get done, <laughs> if you will, but decision, we need to start lining those decisions up this year 
and decisions that we make this year and next year are, you know, they're going to influence other decisions that the council can make over a period of, of many years because they're, you know, the cost structure is just going to change, depending on what we do, obviously. I um, just want to mention to the, uh, the idea of transportation, which has come up a few times. Um, I don't see really anything in here about that. We've got the electric car stations, which is wonderful that that's happening. Um, but may, we may want to talk and, that, and possibly that's collaborating with um, partners or South Portland to talk about possible um, public transportation, other, other forms of transportation. Um, I was also thinking about, um, I'd really like to see us promote, um, our farms and our local farmers and somehow really be supportive of that. And maybe Penny and Caitlin can jump in with some ideas. Um, is that, collaborating with regional partners? Is that talking to um, Fort Williams committee and saying, let's do a farmer's market? I, I don't know what that looks like, but I think food security is really important. And I think that supporting our local farmers and um, is, is very, very important too. So maybe there's other ideas that Penny and Caitlin have about that, but I'd like to see us talk more about that. I think the, um, uh, the way to support the local farmers is to shop and purchase from them directly. Um, it's, not, it's not necessarily more farmers markets. Um, it's really creating uh, visibility uh, for uh, the work that they do um, because Cape Elizabeth is really one giant farmer's market and it's not that big a big a town. That, that's really, um, really true. So, so maybe it's a way to, um, and, and we can talk about it more, some other we way. Promote, to, we should promote all small businesses in town. Exactly. At bottom line. Uh, because what we continually say is we want more business in town. And if we can't get people through the doors of the businesses, then we aren't going to have more businesses. So it's about how do we promote um, the, uh, the, the businesses uh, that exist in our town. And we just revamped our website. and Maybe that's somehow through our website. Um, but it'd be nice to have a discussion about how to do that. The other thing I, I would really like to um, think about is, and this is under our um, basically preservation, is, and I, I talked to Matt about this, we're, we're right now, um, Portland Headlight is listed on the um, uh, national register of historic places. It's, um, it, it is listed. However, it's not listed as a national landmark. Um, neither is Fort Williams, but Portland Observatory, the governor's mansion. There's a few things listed, but Fort Williams is not listed. Portland Headlight, um, two lights, and, and I think that that is something that um, is important to have those listed as national um, historic landmark. Um, also, um, Spurwink um, Church, the um, Riverside Cemetery, those aren't listed. The Spurwink Me Meeting House is not listed. It'd really be nice to see some of these things listed if we're talking about preservation. And um, who knows, eventually, depending on what the town wants to do, 
it could be listed, uh, Portland Head Light, Fort Williams Park could possibly be a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Heritage site. That's not really um, something that's happening right now, just, but there's, we have none in Maine. And I think that um, Fort Williams and the Head Light are very, very important culturally. Um, so I'd really like to see something happen with, with it put into, um, it's called the National Historic Landmark Program. The only problem with that is it goes back to the tourist town versus not tourist town. That's going to draw a whole lot more tourists. We get on more lists. So we should probably answer the first question before we go down that road. Well, I, th I think that the cat's already out of the bag. It's already the most photographed lighthouse um, basically in the world. And um, we've already got... Um, Portland Headlight is listed in the National Register of Historic Places. I, I think that having it as a national landmark is important. It was the very first lighthouse uh, that was commissioned by the US government. Once it became a US government, it's the third oldest lighthouse in the United States. So it's um, a very special place. And I don't know, um, I don't know if people are going to look it up at, in the landmark program and see if it's there or not. I just think that it's important to be um, for it to be preserved. I so. think, that, Valerie. I think that um, I, I I agree with kind of the essence of where you're headed. That these are really uh, valuable landmarks. My question would become, what does it uh, what are the implications of getting um, involved in a program such as that? Because I know that um, there are federal programs that if, uh, if I got my barn involved in it, then there's rules around what I can do with it. So it's like, what are the rules that are going to come with it if you are identified uh, kind of nationally? Well, I think I, I think that's a great question and something that we could look right. we could look into, or that we send yep. it to the conservation committee to look into, or the Fort yep. Williams Park committee, um, so that we can make a more informed decision. Right, right. I I agree. Yep. I just don't like the federal government too close to me at any one time. I understand. <laughs> oh, and one more thing I wanted to mention is the other aspect, which um, I'm not sure where we would put this maybe under effective leadership. The um, civil rights committees will be um, speaking to the council at our next um, meeting and giving an update and some ideas. And one of the things that they're looking at is the sister city concept, um, which you'll be don't hearing. We a sister city. Don't we have a sister city? We, we actually, we don't. What, what there is is um, greater Portland has a sister city of Archangel um, Russia, which is- yeah. Oh, that's it, you're right, okay. Yep. Yeah, Greater Portland. Um, Portland has, I think, four sister cities, Bangor, Old Orchard Beach, uh, maybe it's Brunswick. There's quite, quite a few um, towns and cities that have sister cities. So they're looking at some ideas around um, hmm. sister cities. So that's something that um, is going to be presented to the council. So just want to give you that food for thought of if um, something that the council likes, where would that be put in um, as one of our goals? And it seems like that's um, collaboration, culture, um, mm -hmm. diversity.
One thing that I'd like to see that Jeremy you might have more knowledge on because I think GBCOG is working on this is after the restrictions are lifted and the governor's orders stop getting extended with COVID. Um, however that might look, I'd love to see CAPE leading and signing our name on something that says like, we'd love to have the option to continue to offer at least virtual live streaming. I think we've all seen more engagement from people and people who can't normally attend meetings able to do so. So even though we're, we might be in person, some sort of way of managing that people can still attend. Um, and also the, uh, which I realized wasn't included in this was the uh, surveying of citizens in, in some format. I know like Fort Williams Park Committee just did one for, for their committee, um, but I can't recall other than the, um, uh, the comprehensive plan any other time that you know, it's been put out there like, hey, we're soliciting feedback. So those are two things I think could be um, insightful for what our people want to see as goals and objectives. Yeah, and I think in years past, um, we've had goals um, around the idea of communications. So um, maybe it's a, a, a new goal entirely um, where these things fall under that heading. Um, in the past, it was you know, work on the website and getting the current sort of version of the email news headlines up and running and stuff. But I think, I think both of those examples that you just gave Nicole um, would would fall well under under that area. So, um, if if I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, to, to to Council Boucher's question regarding. Uh, online meetings that uh, I was on the uh, Southern Maine managers meeting this morning and Maine Municipal has submitted a bill to try to provide that as a, uh, I guess to legitimize that for long term to have the ability to stream meetings and, uh, and participate remotely. So uh, that's something that uh, they will be advocating for. So they, they pretty much gave us the uh, pay attention. We may need you to uh, testify on, in behalf, on behalf of a bill in the future. So as, as I do receive updates on that, I, I'll, I'll obviously forward that to the council. I know and with uh, Councilor Garvin's work with the uh, LPC as well, uh, he'll be getting those updates uh, uh, and calls to arms as well in, in their future. Matt, I was realizing that I think that's Penny's role now. Oh, sorry. Didn't you sorry, take Penny. LPC, Penny? Yes. I had. I had forgotten that when I was having a discussion with with uh, Kevin at Ecomain, but I, and yeah, Penny's Penny took that one on. Um, what I just um, again not to go off on a tangent, but what I, what I personally hope we can do with that is adopt some sort of hybrid approach where you know I think I think many of us hope to get back into the town hall chambers at some point, um, but. Um, if we can blend sort of the best of both where we're having in-person meetings, but allowing participation and access through um, uh, live streams like this um, beyond just broadcasting the meetings, but actually having participation through um, through Zoom. I think that's that's the, the sort of sweet spot of both, so. Um, Want to try to kind of take a temperature check and pulse. We're um, it's about eight thirty, and I, I don't know if there's a good sort of breaking point that folks have in mind here um, between the ideation work that we're doing collectively, but then also, like I said earlier in the meeting, maybe sort of taking taking some of this away as homework assignment to bring back to our February one meeting and um, you know, provide additional inputs, maybe <clears throat> get those to either myself or Nicole ahead of that and, and some time can be spent leading into that workshop meeting to, to try and organize things a little bit and then use part of our time on our February one workshop as, as sort of an editing exercise before trying to finalize it after that. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna short circuit the conversation and brainstorming that's happening, but I, I, I don't want to draw this out unnecessarily as well. So 
You know, what I would like is if uh, Nicole could send this in a non PDF form. Yep. So um, just as it is, because that's perfect. Um, it doesn't need to be refined. And then I can send uh, feedback along to, I don't know, is it Nicole going to be the one who continues to put it together? I'm happy to do that. Um, I, I f I'm concerned, like, I don't want to feel like, I, I don't want to edit people's ideas. Like I want us to kind of vote, you know, like, okay, are we saying yes to this one? Let's keep it yellow. If not, let's turn it red. Or, you know, with the lack of being able to pick up a sticky note and move it to a parking <laughs> lot. Um, that's my only concern. So I think maybe what I'll do if you, if people are sending things in is maybe I'll take like here's a sticky noted version of all of the ideas and I don't know make a background that's like let's parking lot let's keep I'm trying to figure out how to facilitate <laughs> virtually so Nicole just um I'll tell you we referred to it earlier the work we do on the manager's performance evaluation every year I actually think that because of how we're being forced to do this it's almost similar to that so what typically happens is that there's a, a rubric that gets sent out to everybody that has, you know, uh, open-ended questions and and more objective questions to answer about Matt and his performance. Everybody does their own thing and then supplies that back to the chair, and the chair sort of aggregates everything. So I think what and and so while we also maintain everybody's individual responses, part of the responsibility of the chair falls to like okay how do i sort of build a narrative that that combines everybody's input into one story here i think that's sort of the same situation this presents where you'll probably see coming back from everybody and their comments or they're like oh well you know there's a there's a bunch of people that are mentioning the same thing so there's clear support for that versus something that's an outlier does that's that make true. sense yeah that's true Okay. Or, you know, if people just want to, you know, throw a check mark on something if they're good with it or, you know, an, an X if they're not or something like that, um, you know, we can always do stuff like that. Um, but I, I agree with you and I appreciate that you, what you're saying about not wanting to, you know, sort of take an editorial role around trying to interpret or, um, you know, edit other people's comments. But I think I think what you'll probably find is, you know, where are the areas of commonality and where are the areas that aren't so pretty, pretty yeah. readily. And uh, very grateful for your willingness to continue working on this. So it was probably, probably more than you realized you were getting yourself into. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. I'm, I'm excited to do it. And I, I think there's been wonderful conversation and thank you for your patience with them. Um, the situation <laughs> the is there situation. anything i guess i'll just ask them before trying to trying to wrap it up for tonight is there anything of significance or or major ideas that anybody wanted to put on the table tonight that hasn't been already uh while every while we all are all you know together and participating now or if not then that's fine but i just um if there was something of significance that warranted all of us discussing so when will we talk about this again? So what I would envision, like I said, is if, if everybody could sort of kind of take away as a homework assignment, um, sort of providing their own feedback, um, mm -hmm. populating the, the, the goal areas that are in the, you know, the vertical boxes on like slide five and six there. Um, with some of those more specific deliverables and action items and things like that. Have that get back to Nicole, you know, ideally a week before our meeting on the first, if, if folks can manage that. Um, give, you know, give her enough time to be able to work with it. I don't want to, I don't want to have Nicole be in a position of having a, having a cram. So if, if folks could take about a week and a half and maybe maybe aim to get things, get any feedback and input you have to Nicole sometime the beginning part of the week of the 25th. Does that work? Yeah. 
and then what we can do is come to the meeting on we have our workshop on the first so we can come to that meeting on the first to then hopefully discuss and be close to the finish line and in a perfect world be able to send that on to our february 8th meeting to approve it and be be ready to move forward but so like that, matt said if, if it so if, if, all, I, all i'm trying to do didn't work plan my project um if i can get the raw materials again? two days so and I can can you say that, again? is it okay if I send just hit share with everyone on this or should I make duplicate copies like one for each person? No, I, I think share would work uh, great. That, that, the reason why I, uh, I sent it as a PDF was because I didn't think I had uh, the uh, distribution uh, privileges uh, as you had shared it with me. So oh, uh, okay. it was my workaround to get it to the council last night. Okay. Yeah, but yeah Matt, I can we, send I, I it. Think... We probably don't want people all working in the same document, though. Is that what happens when you hit share? Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, we don't okay. yeah, because that, that's that's going to be a virtual meeting. We don't want to do that. Okay. Yeah, I'll make so, a duplicate one for each person and send you each individually your own copy of exactly this. And then as long as you use, oh, there's like a track changes. I'll I'll yeah. I'll put a little screenshot of where to find that. Um, I can never find anything on demand. Um, and then and th I can see like last edits from the history. So then I, sh I should be able to see any notes you make or, or or type in. So I'll make an individual for each person. And so it's in Google Doc. Yeah, it's a it's a Google slide. Okay, I want to I. Can I download it to my PowerPoint? And yep. Um, you can, you can I know what it I know yeah. how to. I you don't need to tell me how to do it. So, yeah. um, I just don't want to screw things up. Yeah, I have PowerPoint on my computer. So if you want to download as PowerPoint and edit in there I, and send me that I file, point like, because I think Google is too wonky, cumbersome. It is. So. If folks get stuff back to you, Nicole, like I said, beginning part of the week of the 25th, and I'll, I'll send some reminders for everybody too. Um, but um, I think would that be reasonable? Yeah, that's fine. A, a week would be good. Um, and I'll turn yeah. this, I'll give you guys your copies, you know, by tomorrow, if not tonight. Super. Okay. You don't. All right. Does anybody have anything, final comments they want to make or anything? All right. Well, Nicole, uh, like I said, super appreciative of all your effort. Thank you all, um, the rest of the council, for your input tonight. I thought this was, um, in spite of the difficulty of doing it virtually, um, you know, productive conversation. So thank you all for participating um, and we'll go forward with that plan and um, regroup on this on the first. Keep okay. okay. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. Have a great night, everybody. Right. Yep. Good night. Good night. Good night.